1969, but I think we should give her a warm welcome anyway. <laughs> Barbara Hall. Dufferin Grove Park in Uda Mason, which was a 
wonderful uh, example of, of Jane's influence. Um, the third area where, where she influenced me was when I was there in terms of how to get the city coming to grips with the fact that on the edges of the core, very close to downtown, old obsolete manufacturing buildings were being torn down for surface parking lots because the rigid zoning was not permitting anything to happen. We talk about the Kings, the development of um, two residential neighborhoods, work neighborhoods, business neighborhoods, really vital, active neighborhoods around King and Spadina and uh, King and Parliament. The transformation of those areas, which are relatively recent, very much were influenced by Jane's ideas as well as her actual participation because she was a part of a, an advisory group I put together when I was elected mayor to uh, make some things happen and how to protect the, the core of, of our city. So almost every day, as I move around the city, I see things that are there because of Jane's intervention or because of Jane's influence. Of people like me, we have a lot to thank her for in Toronto. Thank you. Given that you knew her, and given that you understood her principles, what, when you look at our city today, do you look at and say, Jane wouldn't like that? <laughs>
Nobody cares about them. And that's an example of what little legacy, how small we actually treat her in real life. I think we say, oh, she's a nice woman, and she had good ideas, but in fact, we've implemented none of them. A second idea that we've never implemented, not in death and life, is the whole idea of import replacement as the way to create jobs. That the way you actually create jobs is not inventing something new, but replacing locally something that was imported into the area. The best example we have of that, of course, is the wine industry in Niagara. They never invented wine, but they said, gee, they're making this thing in France. Could we make it here? And in fact, we've created a lot of jobs. We do not have any economic development program in Ontario, in any municipality, based on import replacement. Even though she's made it perfectly clear, that's something that, in fact, is the way that jobs actually get created. So, I, I'm very worried about that. The old city of Toronto, where Jane Jacobs principles are still alive, but the rest of the GTA, they're absent? Well, remember, you're talking about the urban core versus the suburbs, and I, I think uh, much of what we uh, talked from Jane is relevant to the urban core. I, I think I might have a disagreement with John at one point here. I think Region Park is perhaps a good example of getting away from a plan that I'm sure she would have thought was a Garden City type of uh, planning concept. Now, I don't know that she necessarily would have liked what's about to replace it, but it still would have brought it. It brings back uh, more interaction amongst people on the street level, uh, shorter blocks, and brings, it takes us out of a uh, kind of uh, development that has really failed, failed us in terms of uh, that part of the area. And there seems to be a fair bit of enthusiasm by a lot of the people that live there about this uh, redevelopment, which means that they've been part of that and they're also part of living in it and will be part of living in it in the future. It's still kind of early to determine whether it uh, will work out uh, totally, but I, I, I think it's in the right direction. Uh, if uh, she were with us today, uh, she would probably look uh, at the mayor and say, you want to do what? <laughs> uh, I think she'd be horrified by this plan to change uh, the waterfront. Uh, uh, to, uh, it violates so much of what so many of us have stood for for so long. Uh, uh, it's a well-developed plan. Uh, yes, it takes a long time to implement it. Remember, the area that we're talking about here is the same size as the whole downtown area. Front Street, up the server and back. That's an enormous area. So of course it's going to take a number of years uh, to develop it. And I think they're developing it in the, uh, the right direction. I think what she got picking up on David's point uh, with five, with, with four, is the fact that this is a, you know, after there's a plan in place, there's a piecemeal approach to go about and change it all in uh, so many ways that I think are uh, very dangerous to the fabric of this. Barbara, <laughs> <laughs> okay, oh, what do you look at in 416 and you say, Jane wouldn't like that? Well, I walked through St. James Town this morning and she didn't like it and wouldn't still in terms of the design and the absence of roads. John Sewell tried to put streets back into that community and rationalize all the open space that uh, nobody owns or uses or has access to really. That's just a wasted resource. And all the people in those buildings crave some open green, green space. And St. Jamestown is an example in the core of the city. There are many, many examples in the, the uh, more suburban communities around the former city of Toronto, and uh, she would continue to hate those and really feel despair for the, the thousands of families who have to live in those communities with so little access or services or sense of, of, of security. Um, why, and why I've been advised that the 
sound in here with the subway and everything is not great. So if everybody could use the hand mic when they speak. You, know, you three can use that. The, the one good thing about what Ford is doing is <laughs> <laughs> he's going to make sure the subway doesn't run us off.